recommended some for me to watch. Hell yeah. Uh, it, it's kind of like... I'm sure you could probably agree, there's probably some animes out there that you really, really like, but you know, it's not really a, a, a conversation starter, so to speak. It's not really something that a bunch of other people can relate to. What do you mean, to. dude? That's like the perfect conversation starter, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hear me out, hear me out. It's like, dude, all right. Let's say, all right, uh, let's say you're just going up to, what, you want to start off with a co-worker? Or you sure. want to start, all right, no, that's, the easiest one is, let's say you're, you're talking to your boy. You're like, oh, yeah, yo, did you watch anime? You can go two ways. <laughs> First way is like, yeah, dude, the season's dope, da, da, da. boom, easy, all right? Second way is, no, that shit's lame. No, nah. what, what is that, cartoons? And then I'll, you I'll see, educate let me, them. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something like this, though, man. Yes, it can go one of two ways, but more than likely, one of those ways is a higher probability, and you know which one. Is hey, a higher hey, prob- no, but I'm saying it's a conversation starter. See, now, now you're, now you're, you're pushing a little bit. You're giving me that little, that little elbow nudge, man. See, it's a conversation starter. Because if you're confident enough, then and you can harness the anime spirit, man, there's nothing that can get in your way. Not even my, you know. <laughs> Am I talking to, like, Goku over here? Sorry. Yeah, dude. Hey, I'm Super Saiyan 1 right now, dude. I'm trying to, you know, or not even 1. Like, I'm not, like, what is it? Uh, 5, 5.5? 4.5 right now? That's what that's what I'm at? Super Saiyan 4.5? Oh, you went from 1 to 4.5? <laughs> I was trying to do the episodes. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. See, see but I'm getting there. I'm getting there, dude. See? And then, all right, another way. All right, let's say the, the more probably important way of seeing things if you get a conversation starting with a lady friend hey you watch anime yeah this shit's great oh my god it's better than netflix and chill the see boom easy <laughs> now i guess it depends on the type of lady friends you talk to <laughs> no dude i don't know i'm just saying look all right and then the other way the other way where they're like no nah, what's that or there's two ways right no nah, what's that oh i don't know it's just this, you know this cartoon i've grown up with it it's really dear to my heart um it's really funny and it's a simple easy show to watch you want to watch it with us boom instant date look at that all I right got and then yeah. the third way is nah that's just lame i hear little kids do that and then you know what you do you say bitch get the fuck out of here you ain't worth my time yeah open your mind open your mind i i feel like i'm talking to uh, uh... <laughs> anime version of Jocko will like try dude to- <laughs> I'm just saying alright why do you think all these um, rappers nowadays are like doing anime stuff cause it's like been really because they're kids because no they're man kids. it's been impactful in their life and look at look at where they are now dude hey well they're making a hell, a hell of a lot more money than we are dude <laughs> you know I understand what you're saying I understand what you're saying but I think it's more acceptable for a younger generation of, of whatever whatever celebrities could be sports stars, could be musicians, rappers, sure. whatever, to be into anime because it's more commonplace. Hell I think yeah. when we were growing up, if we were looking at, let's say, a K dot, a Kendrick Lamar, if we're looking at somebody even older than us, like mm. a, a Kanye or Jay, sure. anime for them was not something that was very in. It wasn't something that was very popular sure. in, in urban culture. Sure. But over time, it was. Over time, oh, yeah, I mean, dude. you met people, you met tons of people that were into anime, as yeah. did I. Yeah, and so man. now it's become so ingratiated. It's become so ingrained in our culture that yeah, you're gonna see like uh, uh, songs by rappers called Goku. They're gonna yeah. be like uh, you know like uh, super big fans of Dragon Ball Z and, yeah. and all the other you know uh, hey. what, what what are what are the big ones that you know? Attack on Titan. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. One, no, one Punch Man. One Punch Man is fantastic. Dude, can I just say, like, I before really talking to you about like anime and stuff, sure. I guess finding out that you even watch anime weeks ago. Yep. I never pegged you as one to watch it. I, well, I don't think that's something that I knew. And I think that's I- that's a common misperception people have when they associate anime to type of person. Um, and I think that goes just beyond anime, just in shows in general, right? Like, there are some shows on Netflix that are like. Um, kind of like what's the what's the right term guilty pleasure right that you wouldn't want to like you know explain to the world or you don't have any pride in but you still love that shit to death you know sure. so for me at least it's just i've met so many people that enjoy anime from uh-huh. different types of 
there are different walks of life, right? You have like the hardcore, they go and dress up and cosplay and things like that. And then you uh-huh. have more low key watchers like me that I'm not up to date on everything, but when I do uh-huh. have time, given how busy I am, like, yeah, I'm going to pound through a couple episodes because a, it's easy. It's easy things to watch and they're sort of simple messages conveyed in it the most entertaining way that Mm. also have that nostalgic cartoon aspect that's expected of anime Mm. right because i'm not sure about you but like when i was growing up and i would come home from school grade school like yo from like 3 30 to like 4 30 or 5 there was always like cartoons going on whether it be like pokemon or some other shit i think there was once where it was like beetleborgs or whatever going on you remember that you remember yeah, dude. I had yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah there was like a red green and blue one i was like yo what are, what are, what were the other colors man why didn't yellow make the cut or anything like that sure. um but you know that right so that was like something that i took pleasure in because there was no way in hell that i wanted to do my homework after you know being in school all day long mm. right and this was before like i didn't grow up with cable for one. Me neither. Right? Neither so did. that was what was on TV. Or <laughs> Saturday mornings. What did you do when you were a kid? This I watched is... TV. I watched cartoons. Exactly. 7 a.m. To like, to like 11. Yeah, yeah, man. So it's like one of those things. It's, it's um, I mean, I don't constantly or actively reminisce about it when I watch anime and say, I'm like, oh, yeah, I do this because the nostalgia is driving me. It's like, no, it's just a part of me. And, wow. Yeah, it's just, wow. Rather than watching a basically news that's all about coronavirus and whether or not people are getting a stimulus damn check it's like dude watch some anime some people some artists have worked really hard to put something together you know Mm. i i feel you and one thing that i admire about this is i think since you've admitted that you're kind of a a low-key anime fan yeah I think it makes sense because you're a low-key fan of a lot of things. Yeah. Like, you, you told me before that you kind of would want to get back into WWE. Hell yeah, right? dude. Hell yeah. yeah. I and, mean, of this, course I would. But Yeah, go ahead. Go, ahead, go ahead. Of course I would. But I think um, rather than the WWE now, at least for how I've been thinking about it, I just want to get more into the MMA. Ah. Uh, or the sport of MMA, rather. Uh, the UFC and stuff like that. Just because I feel like um, uh, what the WWE does is fantastic. And I will be, you know, forever indebted to them for entertaining me for those evenings when, you know, SmackDown was on. You know, mm-hmm. again, before, I, you know, I didn't have cable growing up. So all I had access to was SmackDown. Shit that happened in Raw, no idea what had to happen. <laughs> No idea. I'll see I, would find, I would find out online. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, right? Or hear from your buddies or whatever. You're like, oh, that happened. Yeah. I'm like, whatever, man. Different roster. Don't matter. We're gonna take you out. We're gonna take you out at SummerSlam or some shit like that. Whenever they would and then do it's the like, verses. What? Oh, there's a draft. There's yeah, a draft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. But so, fantastic, fantastic company, fantastic entertainment. Uh-huh. Um, but rather than tarnish my my beloved roster of the wwe and my beloved memories of it you know and putting those expectations onto the new generation i think is unfair Uh, i'd rather just go with something a little more new a little more fresh uh, a little more real quote unquote (laughs) um in other words, though, what you're really saying is, you know, WWE will never go back to the peak that it once achieved. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I think, it, I mean, it may, it may, um, but it will forever have its little monopoly on the entertainment fighting side of things. And it's not going to necessarily reach the peak of what it's capable of. I just think it's not going to peak in my own book. For what mm. it should be, okay. and I may be wrong. Maybe wrong. You, I, I, what are you saying? Prove you me don't... wrong, Vince McMahon. Prove me wrong. <laughs> I'm sure he's trying very hard. <laughs> but, you know, 
Now, you wouldn't say the same with the NBA, though, because I feel like you really enjoy the young talent and you feel like the NBA is only getting better. Is that true? I think sports evolve. Mm. Um, just in our time of following it, we've you've seen the evolution. I mean, you got into it basically when Kobe was super, you know, all-star caliber, number eight, rocking. Um, actually, actually, I got into it, um, like really got into it, after Shaq left, um, okay. I remember the first NBA Finals that I kind of paid attention to sure. because some of my friends were watching was 2004. Mm. So I missed. Oh, you didn't? And you missed the three P? I did. Yeah, I had no idea. Like I knew that the Lakers were big time, and I knew who Shaq was. Sure, I knew who Kobe was, but I wasn't really into the NBA. And it wasn't Amen. until the 2004 NBA Finals against the Detroit Pistons where people were telling me more things, and I even caught a little bit about one of the games. Sure, and then I think. When I went into high school, that was when I was very much into the NBA. But mm-hmm. it's kind of like watching WWE after The Rock and Stone Cold retire. <laughs> it's like you're watching the lowest point, pretty much. And no, then you're hoping man. for something good. But that's oh, something. The, you don't think so? No, 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 no. I agree. I agree with you. But I'm, 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 I don't like the words you picked, man, because I get where you're coming from. And mm-hmm. it's like kind of... Uh, Especially for a fantastic top tier team like the Lakers, but uh-huh. there's always going to be those phases where it's all about rebuilding, man. Like I went through it before went before we had Kobe, the Kobe Shaq combo. Mm-hmm. Like I went through it when our star was Nick Van Axel. But bro, when you say you went through it, you were like what six? You were like seven? yeah, yeah. But at that point, you're still competitive, if not more competitive, because you don't know better. Right, <laughs> and if you had like a family that was like a diehard Laker Nation so- sort of family, like I did, it oh. was like, yo, if my grandfather's watching it, well, <laughs> there's no way in hell I'm changing the channel from him. So, you know, <laughs> over time, you just learn to adapt, and you realize, oh, it's actually entertaining, and mm. yeah, dude, like so, we had a point, man, we had a stretch where, uh, what was it? Our back court was our saving grace which was nick van axel and uh eddie jones who right. once kobe came along eddie jones basically was like oh well there goes my job so <laughs> that's right that's right i mean look anyway. look i understand your greater point that sports are cyclical for a historic franchise like the lakers i shouldn't be using words like low point I yeah how dare you perfect. how dare you tarnish the royal purple and gold i i guess what i was trying to say was in the context of what uh, everybody else would most likely think about like, oh yeah, you know, Lakers. You think of the three peat with Shaq and Kobe. You think of the the uh, the repeat with Pau Gasol and Kobe. Sure. But I was trying to frame it in such a context that I miss that apex of the got Lakers it. in modern times. Got it. And I just started watching afterward when the whole super team got blown up too. Mm-hmm. Like Shaq left. You know, Gary Payton might have retired after that year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carl Malone might have retired as well. Lamar Odom was. Um, I think back on the Lakers by then, mm-hmm. but Candyman, the Candyman. That's right. You know, he, he he pretty much had he was pre-diabetic for most of his <laughs> point. <laughs> I remember, you know, it's funny you mention that because I remember reading about some articles that said, you know, Lamar Odom would often complain about tingling in the in his fingertips, <laughs> and and that's like a common yeah, symptom yeah, for uh, pre-diabetic yeah, people, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it's like the, the nerve damage, basically. Yeah. It's the onset of nerve damage. Uh, but you know, I think he cleaned up his diet later on, but. He, he had a different addiction. Yeah, he, he traded candy for a different kind of candy, yeah. Different yeah. kind of candy. You know, it didn't quite work out too well for him, but Amen. glad to see that he's trying to get his life back on track right, mm-hmm. right now. Um, no, you know, I, I, I think, you know, kind of taking it all the way back now, you, you mentioned anime. One of the reasons why I kind of attribute anime as something that not a whole lot of people in, in my life really talk about is because of this. I do have a couple of friends that are really, really into anime. They're not really low key into it. They're really into it. Sure. One, one unabashedly so, because when he was in grad school at USC, mm-hmm. he was actually president of the USC Anime Club. There we go. There we go. And and I knew him very well from my undergrad years at UCI with him, and I knew the kind of person he that he was. Very, very reserved. Very, yeah, uh, you know, very much, you know, in his own mind and whatnot. Not very social. But for whatever reason, he really loved the anime club. When he retired as president, he made it a point that every year, even though he's in a different state, he would fly back to Southern California. For what reason? 
only to attend Anime Expo every single year. Oh, yeah. So for like the past decade or so, he's been consistently doing it. Of course, he's tremendously disappointed because, as you know, this year pretty mm-hmm. much all conventions have been canceled. Mm-hmm. So he won't, he won't be doing that. But uh, that's one extreme, but that's mm-hmm. one point of reference in my mind. The other point, a buddy of mine who's in uh, Dallas, Texas now, he's very much into anime too. And he used to tell me that, oh, like all of his friends from, from Pakistan, they love anime. Like they, oh, it's all they talk about, anime and Marvel, anime and Marvel. And that's <laughs> cool and all. But then like I, I compare it to like people from my closer friend circle, from undergrad, from, from grad school, and even like some of the coworkers that I talk to more regularly, they're not related to that. I mean, yeah, at some point they did. At some point we all did. Like I, I, I admit, you know, I was really into kind of the more, I guess, the mainstream animes you could say that that were kind of Americanized to some sure. extent, like the the Pokemon, the Digimon, Card Captor Sakura, if you remember that one, sure. uh, you know, Yu Gi Oh, yeah. all the shit that was oh, like yeah. Yugi! heavily, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and I bought the shit too. Like I had the cards, oh, I had yeah. you know, whatever else you could buy, and. Uh, I was Which into that. I am that... forever thankful for to my parents for dealing with that kind of shit, dude. Like, in retrospect, I'm like, God damn, those packs were not cheap, you know. Oh, I know, I know. I mean, feels honest... guilty now, and like now, whenever you know my mom asks for anything, I'm like, fuck it, sure. Like, I don't, yeah, whatever you need, you know. I feel you. I feel you, man. I still remember, like, I I was kind of bad in some ways because. Back in the day, I think, uh, like, late middle school, my parents made me take piano lessons. So, like, every Sunday, sure. they'd have to take me to, um, like, uh, Miss Rico's house. So she was, like, the piano teacher in the hood. Okay. <laughs> Not really the hood. But they, okay. they, like, they were down to Beach Torrance area. And uh, I would go, and I hated it because I didn't really like practicing all the, you know, textbook songs sure. and the classical music and whatnot. But, um, you know, as kind of a quote-unquote reward, for, for me, you know, going to the lesson and practicing and whatnot, my dad would, uh, you know, once a month probably take me to the comic book shop or the card shop, whatever it was called. Sure. I think officially it was called like Comic Book World on Sepulveda and Hawthorne in the okay. city of Torrance. And uh, I would get one pack. Hell yeah. And it's usually like Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! But dude, like as you said, the packs were like like six bucks or seven yeah. bucks. Yeah. That should that's, up. yeah, that's like pre-inflation right now. You know, that's like, yo... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like that's like an easy twelve, thirteen. That's like a yeah, movie right there. That's exactly, a movie. man. Exactly. So I, I feel you there. I think, um, you know, we often forget that uh, in some ways we were spoiled, and uh, it's in only every right way, in every way, we were <laughs> in every way. That's in right. Way. And it's only right that you return the favor as often as possible yeah. Yeah. today. Um, but you know, I, I what I take from this conversation regarding anime and bringing it back to that again, I would say that. I think your overall point is if you like something, you should be proud of it. You should wear it on your sleeve and you shouldn't really, uh, you know, buy into the stereotypes that are sure. often affixed among people who may be into certain things because you never know how people are. You never know how cool people can be and you never know how a variety of people can enjoy certain things mm-hmm. in, at different levels, at different extremes. And so be open-minded and, uh, you know, share your fandom for, yeah, for anime. Yeah, and, uh, like, I think this is the year, man. Like I said, um, it's all about authenticity. The more and more mm-hmm. I am growing up, the more and more I am learning that authenticity and just being honest is the right approach to things. Um, mm. Just because even if, i mean if you're ashamed of doing something then you probably shouldn't be doing it in the first place <laughs> right like you gotta you gotta recalibrate what whatever the hell you're doing if you're ashamed of it mm. um yeah, i mean there I, I get but you know it's, it's a very loose term when i say ashamed because you will be ashamed if you're like uh uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna dive deep into that. That, that I, I feel like uh, we're gonna go in the X-rated factor if I keep on going on that end. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, wear it on your sleeve. Maybe not on your sleeve, but you know, keep it close to your heart, inside your jacket or coat pocket, <laughs> and don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to bring it out if someone asked about it. You know, you don't have to showcase it to the world. But oh, you know, I, I get you. You know what I mean? I, like, you know, don't hide it, or you know. Keep things in the right places. You know, not everything is a conversation starter. 
I got <laughs> going back to what I was initially saying. You finally agree with me. It took you twenty minutes. Well, you, you, know, to... you know, it's been a long day, man. It's been a long day. It's been a long week for sure. So I know. I know, man. How are you though? Are, are you? Are you? Are I'm you're... good, dude. So I mean, just so everybody knows, uh, my ass got furloughed. Kinda furloughed to part time. So I am still much, 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 much blessed. Um, in comparison to others who straight up have been laid off or furloughed indefinitely. Um, so I can't complain. And I bring home a pretty nice paycheck anyways. It's not like uh, I live lavishly. Um, so I have first world problems in that sense. Um, but what's been stressing me out, man, and something that I'm willing to talk to you about right now is... It gives me the opportunity to work on some other aspects of my life. Some aspects that I've kind of left to the wayside because I've ta- let work take some priority over my time. And now, kind of being forced the hand, I have the time. Um, on top of that, it's not a vacation. It's actually, alright, I have time. I used to make X, um, if we want to use that as sort of like a success, a daily success measurement. How can I continue that and exceed that eventually over time? Okay. And... Th- uh, I think you know where I'm going with it, but when I think about it, that automatically leads me to think about my side hustle, my company, which is Boonso, the food um, food service sort of company that I have going on. Mm-hmm. To make things worse, it's damn COVID season, so doing food shit is not probably the best thing to be hustling towards, right? Um, <laughs> so, I mean, my normal hustle on that end has also had its own little furlough, given how there's social distancing measures going on and events uh, have been delayed or straight up canceled until next mm-hmm. year. Uh. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, I've been having not headaches, but, you know, mental blocks that I've been trying to hurdle over. Uh, and I use that word on purpose because... What I've realized today is there's no point in trying to hurdle something you know you have to climb before jumping over. So I'm, I'm learning the hard way here and taking little baby steps. And I'm trying to figure out from your perspective, mm-hmm. what is the best way right now to promote a business? Mm. Uh... And again, I, I'm the I'm the business guy between us two. Uh, Arjun's a smarter one. He's 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 the uh, he's the engineer. Uh, Don's the really everything guy. He's the right <laughs> I'm just like chiming in from time to time. Nonsensical rambling. No man. Um, oh, let me, no, let me man. Think. Well, well, okay. Well, first, look, before I answer that question, I think sure. I need to have a, a fuller picture of your current okay. marketing status. So I know you're on. Bunso specifically sure. is on different social media handles already. Yep. On Instagram, I've seen it. Yeah. On, uh, I think you have a Facebook page as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a website. Not so much active. So let's let's uh, be honest. I'll be honest with you. I have two media outlets right now, one being Instagram, and uh, one being the website. The others I've created but do not use. Okay. Um, let me. I, okay, by the way, are we recording this whole thing? I don't know if Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've been recording. Uh, yeah. I think once we started talking about anime, I'm like, this is gold. Hit record. Oh, okay, uh, cool. This is a point fiver. When I brought up the whole, hey, what episode are we? Or Super Saiyan 4.5 or whatever. I was like, yeah. Uh, gotcha. I was thinking about it. So somewhere around there, I started it. Okay, understood. So so now, I guess, since we never really went into it, I'd like to know for Boonso right now, sure. what is your operations like? Like, I know you okay. are, are everything, pretty much. You do yeah, it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do other people occasionally work for you? Do you have, like, buddies that help out? Like, what, what's the situation like? Yeah, so right now, what what's really happening is it's me and my wife that do everything. Um, okay. I kind of do a lot of the preparation when it comes to the food, such mm-hmm. as, you know, all the marinating, all the skewering, all the rolling, you know, all the, the, hold on, sorry, she's listening, I, I, I gotta get her to walk away before I keep talking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I do all that. Um, okay. You know, all the prep work, all the loading, most of the loading, um, the heavy lifting, uh, the planning, stuff like that. But throughout that process, she's the one that kind of acts as my second ear, third ear, rather, that, you know, makes sure that my ass is doing the right thing, uh, as I tend not to. I, I end up, you know, pushing the buttons or pushing the limits way too much. Um, but yeah, no, it's mainly just, and then when it comes time for operations, when, you know, we go live and there's customers, uh, both of us are running shop and it's just us two. And I did that on purpose because I want us to remain small. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay. Just, um, thinking out loud for uh-huh. now. Uh, and I'm not going to take offense to anything. You can go ahead and just spit out whatever. Oh, no, you know, I, I, just wear it on your sleeve, bro. Just wear it on your sleeve. No, I, I got you. I, I always want to preface this by saying, like, I know you're much more informed about the food industry and, and what works, what doesn't. For me, sure. I'm just kind of thinking from a different perspective, right? I'm thinking yeah. from an outsider's perspective. Of course. So one thing that I think about, because it's COVID season, obviously, uh, some of the logistics of the food delivery, food restaurant business mm-hmm. become harder. But I wonder if you could do something to promote, hey, like we can cook food and drop it off to you. Yep. Like especially if you have customers in the past that really liked your stuff and mm-hmm. want to work with you or would want to promote you in some kind of way. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can contact them and say, hey, like, well, you know, we're thinking of like uh, doing this thing where we just roll around the neighborhood, drop mm-hmm. off deliveries from like. 11 a.m. all the way to 2 p.m. for lunch mm-hmm. or whatever time for dinner and uh, you just kind of make your orders online um, and, and you know, we'll, we'll take them and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll distribute them uh, in our car. Like, have you thought about or is that even feasible? Like, I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, that no, no, no. Of course, of course. It's very feasible. There are some companies out there that kind of do it. I actually have a meeting with uh, one of them tomorrow um, where they kind of have a, a spot set up, a designated spot that's been cleared and permitted and all that, where there's many, uh, to group us all together, vendors or companies that utilize the space as kind of like a pickup spot. Um, so mm. the food's created there, uh, people order in advance, and the food is made on the spot and hand-delivered or delivered by some you know, third party. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, we have thought about that. There are some of my colleagues that also are kind of taking it on themselves, making it in their kitchen and uh, doing personalized delivery. I don't mm. think that makes sense for someone that still has to work, even though okay. I'm part-time furloughed. Um, gotcha. And I don't think that would be a wise financial approach to it. If we want to talk oh. margins, if it's more about the passion, yeah. And maybe during that this time, I will. But I want to aim for bigger fish at this point. Okay. Okay. So you, you do concede that, at least temporarily, it may be something you might consider doing. Of course. Given the situation. Okay. Um, yeah, and gas think? is at an all-time low, dude. Like, yo, i I got to capitalize on that. It helps your margins a little bit, for sure. <laughs> um, so, so like, okay, just just thinking of like numbers here. How many different customers do you typically get per month? Like, do you have so, a stable amount of orders? Do you have a like, yeah, how does yeah. It work? So I've never done orders. Okay, uh, I've only done live events. Okay. Um, okay. So this year, the way that I've been taking it. Um, was to establish ourselves in farmers markets right, right. Um, and right now we're established at one but the thing is given how farmers are, markets are now only uh, essential is that the right term that they're using essential businesses are allowed to continue operations uh-huh. whereas non-essentials are not food being one of them okay normally you know, if we were to exclude the COVID impact that's going on right now uh, and the social distancing measures that are hindering standard business operations, mm-hmm. uh, I, I could say on a weekly basis. Kelly, how many would you say we do? How many bowls for a, a farmer's market? On average, I'd say maybe mm, 30 orders. 
like the equivalent of like thirty orders, give or take five, depending on the week. Okay, so so yeah. I guess that's uh, your your margin then, like your profit margin yeah. per bowl is what. Um, I don't want to. I'd rather not even talk about. Oh, yeah, that, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Sorry. Sorry. It's uh, yeah. I usually uh, aim. I usually aim for around forty percent. Okay. The food is not that great when it comes to margins. It doesn't. Okay. That's it's fine. not even accounting for the damn labor. You know. I got you. Yeah. Um. I, well, you know, honestly, like during this time, have you thought of? Um, I I know you said you're considering doing the. Uh, Sure. Personal in person delivery and whatnot. Yeah. Well, here I have I have an idea for you, and I want to hear your your take from a yeah, yeah. a standard okay. kind of is this smart or not? I haven't okay. even told my wife this because I just thought of it on the spot right now. Okay. So think of this as going rogue, where what I want to do is take that food delivery piece, but because I want to hit scale. I want to go to hospitals. As you know, hospitals have what we call floors, where there's specific types of patients on every floor. For those specific kinds of patients, there's usually a certain team of nurses that take care of them. From time to time, and depending on the hospital, you could average around you know, maybe 10 to 20 nurses per floor. Mm-hmm. How, or rather, what do you think about providing a nursing shift with food for the whole um, team? Sorry. Thinking out loud. Well, Thinking straight. So, 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 uh, would you do this out of the goodness in your heart? You know, and that that's a, that's the other thing. So I wouldn't even. I'm thinking, again, going rogue, just uh-huh. whoever's in charge there or whoever's taking the order, just saying, "Hey, this is my cost. Cover my cost and get me some gas, please." And the rest is you. Hmm. I think I think honestly that's a that's a great way to go about it because you get to kind of uh, kill two birds with one stone here. Number one, you're you're fueling, you're providing nourishment to the front line, mm-hmm. right? Or who are helping take care of the sick. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe they have COVID, maybe they don't, but just taking care of the sick or, or helping, you know, people on certain floors who are in the hospital for whatever reason. And at the same time, you know, who doesn't like food? Who doesn't like being catered to? If you have sure. a Bunso pretty much uh, distributed all throughout one particular wing of a hospital and they like it, and of course the nurses are going to have friends, they're going to have families, the patients are going to be there caring about the nurses, a nice lunch that they had. Mm-hmm. And it's a great way to kind of promote yourself too and do a good thing, right? Do mm-hmm. something that'll warm your heart and, and that'll make a bunch of nurses feel uh, appreciated mm-hmm. for all the you. So I like that idea. Um, mm-hmm. And I would even take an extension to that. Don't just limit yourself to nurses. Yep. You can also do uh, like you know your local firefighter, right? Like your local uh, firehouse, whatever mm-hmm. it's called police stations even like i'm sure there's a lot of you know people who are in the emergency services right that could be open to this kind of an idea where you know you say hey like i well you may have to consider even taking a larger hit than just them covering your gas like i think if you really want to do this just to get your name out there primarily Mm -hmm. just to get your business booming a little bit this would have to be a little bit of an investment on your part where you say you know what I'm not even going to ask for any compensation. Mm-hmm. This is just me showing the world what Lunso is about, helping the people in my community that help us all the time with, you know, free lunch for sure. one particular. Sure. I think that would be that would be easier to pull off. I, you know, just, that's just me thinking out loud. Yeah, like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, and of course, on top of that, they wouldn't. Uh, as receivers of something essentially free. It would be wise of them just to even take it, um, unless they're worried about you know food poisoning or whatever. But uh, yeah, no, no, I get what you're saying. Okay, okay. Well, here's how I would approach it too, and I don't know anything. Let me just preface that again. But I would actually, uh, <laughs> you know, you say that like every five minutes, dude. Even like even during like a normal episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Do I? Okay, that's bad. I should yeah, more. I know, man. That's why I'm calling you out. <laughs> I feel like I should be more confident in some of those things in normal episodes. But for this, like, I, I'm really just like talking out out of my head right now. But I'll say, in order to do this right, I would um, kind of like formally introduce yourself to whatever you know, fire department, police department, nursing staff in a hospital you'd want to work with. Sure. Um, kind of like go up there, maybe talk to their admin people. Difficult, like, man. Hey, it's this difficult is, this right is now. Because uh, social distancing, man. Offices are closed. Non-essential business is not operating. So, I, of course, I'm going to... I'm Not to totally dismiss that. I'm just saying that would have to um, change a little bit and be modified such that I just reach out, you know, via email and or, um, you know, other modes of social media. Well, that, that's fine. That's fine. Right. I think... Okay, you're right. You're right. So in this particular era that mm-hmm. we're in... Mm-hmm. That we're in uh, start off with the email, but also, you know, within the email, do point toward the social media so they can at least check yeah, you. Yeah. Well, oh, I'd, yeah. I'd have a menu, basically. So, yeah. Okay, there you go. There you go. And so, basically, doing this just establishes credibility, sure. and, it, and it removes the potential doubt about, oh, is there poison in this? <laughs> like, you know, oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. They don't have to think about, like, the quality of the food in that way. They can trust that they're going to get legitimate, sure. good, edit food. Um, so, you know, I actually like this idea as a, as a catalyst to promote your business. Um, although I know in an ideal case, they would cover the cost. Right? Well, no, if anything, I think rather than saying that, just say, hey, any, if you'd like to tip or cover, we could talk about it when I deliver. But for now, let me just do this for you. Okay. That, that's also another little, way. A little can... ballsy, right? Or just like, hey. I'm paying it forward. Yeah. Remember me, you know, if you're ever yeah, hungry. I, to be honest with you, like, here, here's the thing, man. Like, uh, I I like this idea a lot. And, and, you know, for the longest time, I've been asking you, before we were doing the podcast, I've been asking you ways for me to invest in Boomso in some way. Yeah, bro. So let, uh, hey, yo, let's just link direct deposit accounts, though. Just, just uh, shoot your... <laughs> link, link direct deposit accounts. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> That's an, interesting, that's an interesting way to put it. That's an interesting way to put it. Uh, but no, what I'm saying is basically, in order for you to really get the wheels going on sure. this particular endeavor, yeah, I'd be willing to cover all the costs and the gas and, and everything, the oh, food costs and whatnot. I know you would. I'd be willing to do that because I think it's awesome for you to do this to help out people in your sure. community. Number one, by sure. giving them a free lunch, but also on top of that, if it does promote your business, which I know it will, yeah, I, I am for sure it will. Hey, you know, maybe the, we could do this with uh, your company. One day I'll do it, and I'm like, yo, I'm not paying. Don't pay me. Don't pay me. It's on me. Just I'll prepare like ten bowls for you guys or some shit like that. And then you uh, know, it, it's it's interesting actually. Uh, you know, before COVID season, I think once a month or so, food trucks would come out to the uh, the parking lot like ooh. next to our. And um, I don't know how it would work for you in particular. <laughs> I'd just be slinging bowls, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like setting up a table. Like, hey, so who wants the chicken? Uh, okay, you? Okay, I'll be for yeah, this. Just, just pop it in the microwave. All right, just pop it in the microwave. Trust, trust. Just go run inside. Uh, so, you're good. Here's my website. <laughs> but, but, I, <laughs> but I will say what might work is, and I don't know about the logistics of this moving forward, but in our building uh, on the first floor, one of the spaces is actually still vacant. Mm. And I've noticed that from time to time, they do have some kind of food type of, some some Ooh. restaurant, some catering business come in, you know, just kind of set up shop over there. Sure. And just, just so they have like four or five hours to work with to serve all the tenants in the building. Um, I don't know if that's still an opportunity moving forward after COVID season, but if it is, then yeah, yeah, more than likely I'll talk to the facilities and Hell yeah. see a way to get you into that because Hell obviously yeah. the food truck is probably not not in the cards at the moment it doesn't seem no, like you'll have no, no. Food truck, See, but what's what's in the cards all right well yeah no, i get you i get you all right i like that i like that so before diving too deep into that i like that i like that now i uh-huh. wanted to get your take on this i was talking okay. to my wife about this and i will admit and i'm sure you've seen it with my, our talks that i tend to have for lack of a better word, a flaky approach to things. I've been doing better, right? I've been doing better. Um, But I tend to, not so much flip-flop, but have my goals changed a lot faster than 
I'd like to have them change before they've even been accomplished. Mm. Right. And with that, <coughs> I thought um, as an outsider, more or less, you'd help me figure this out in regards okay. to what my ultimate goal should be. Right. Okay. So right. right now, or rather, if you had when we initially talked and I introduced you to it and you gave me a nice influx of an uh, investment startup money, um, the, the, at the time I was doing the six two six night market, which was fantastic by the way, and uh, I hope that all those vendors are doing well because I know a lot of them depend on the income, but half the seasons already going or got canceled, mm. so I'm kind of feeling for them. Mm -hmm. Um, at the time the goal of Bunso was to eventually open up a brick and mortar restaurant so like a sit down place that would ultimately get a Michelin star or reach that caliber of acceptance in the world um, and do you know what? Uh, just for, for those that don't know what a Michelin star is a Michelin star is probably the highest echelon of grading when it comes to the food world uh, where only the what's deemed to be greatest restaurants receive a star rating of one to three there are very very few restaurants that ever reach three let alone chefs that reach that level um, but to me I was like fuck it I just want one because there's no goddamn way that I would feel comfortable charging $500 a plate like some of these other places are. Mm. All right. That was the goal before. And then mm -hmm. I've gotten a little more, or over time, kind of reevaluated things. And there came a point where I wanted to be like the next Panda Express, but for Bunso. So it'd be like Bunso Express or Filipino Express. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had like this uh, funny idea of doing a like fobby kind of a pronunciation of express so it'd be like express or like express with like ph or you know bullshit like that uh -huh. um where you know it wouldn't be a sit-down place it'd almost be like a fast casual similar to like chipotle or a pokey place uh -huh. like panda express where you know your dishes are out there and everything is clean and modernized and you start at one end of the line and you work your way down you know, that to me, that seemed like the easiest feasible jump from vendoring to brick and mortar. Mm. And then I started realizing, wait, what the fuck? Why did I switch myself from basically wanting to be the or in the top echelon of cooking to essentially making money? Mm. Right. And they started to make me realize, fuck, did I lose the passion and am I just chasing the dollars now? Um, wow. Right? Wow. A little deep, a little deep. Okay. A little no, this tough, is good, though. A little tough. So I, I, I have several questions. The first sure. being, before you decided to pursue Bunso, sure. what, what made you want to do it in the first place? Uh, to me, well, first off, cooking became a part of my life in college and when I would cook it was more of a way of saving money because you know we didn't have our damn card to go to Mesa Court or Commons or anything like that anymore uh -huh. um, and though close to home was well, still far enough where you know going home to eat wasn't feasible and by home I mean parents right right so cooking became a way of saving money and trying. At the time, I was relatively fit. Now, nowadays, a mm, mm, little tough, a <laughs> little tough. You know, you stairs are tough. Dunk. You can still dunk right now. You know, yeah. I, could t I could touch the net on a you know, nice six-footer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You know, um, oh, damn, it'd be wild if I go to and try to jump. I haven't even tested that out in a while. Oh, dude, save your knees. I don't want your knees no, to dude, get dude, my knees are hurting. They hurting just walking, dude. Uh, <laughs> but I digress. I digress. Okay. Um, shit, where were we? Uh, I, I was asking you about your reason for kind of. Getting oh into yes, the yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was in college, right? Um, and at the time, people actually enjoyed my food. Mm. And 
because I was the president of so many organizations, uh, I would have meetings. And then I just started to enjoy doing that as taking mm-hmm. care of my crew, you know, my people that were, you know, helping me push the organization forward. Uh-huh. That, and then with my friends and stuff like that, it, it, it became an application of science that I was learning where, mm-hmm. you know, I've killed too many birds with one stone that I couldn't even keep count, right? Like, it made people happy. I'm um, learning something new every day, chemistry-wise. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. saving money, you know? And I'm having fun. Mm. Um, so that's where it initially started. But okay. when it came closer now, you know, after goddamn however many years of grad school I've gone through, um, um. it's just a way for me to a pay homage to my family um Mm -hmm. because these are kind of family-based recipes that i have adapted to my own um and it's a way to showcase or be a a way to showcase that filipino food should have its own little stand similar to how thai food is now or indian food is now or chinese food or japanese food is like Mm -hmm. you know i'm sure with your homies if you guys are going out and you're like, oh, let's go grab a bite to eat. What are you feeling? Oh, dude, I can go for like a burger. Oh, I can go for some Italian. You know what? Uh, why don't we just go to that Mexican spot down the street? I don't think Filipino food has gotten that or to that level. Mm. Even though there are places out there. And I wanted to take it on my own back to say like, yo, our shit should be up there. I think it's good enough. I have the history in my past where there, these weren't Filipino people trying my food in college. Like these were just... You know, you, well, <laughs> a little skewed UCI, right? University of Chinese Immigrants. But, you know, yeah. so many so many different, you know, walks of life trying the food at the time. And at that time, I wasn't even a great cook um, as I am today. So it just made sense yeah, at the time. Very, okay, can I just interject here and ask sure. a question? You may not really like the premise of this question, but, okay, I understand the uh, the working philosophy here. But at any point did you think, hey, let me seek out those that are already trying to do something in the Filipino cooking world. Mm -hmm. And let me see if I can contribute to what they're doing to gain experience and also add my own stylistic changes to what they're doing. And then maybe after I get some good working experience with them, then maybe branch out to do my own thing. Did that ever cross your mind? It definitely did. But then I realized that why would a chef hire me and have to pay me minimum wage when they could hire an illegal and pay them half. Mm. And not have to teach them the secrets. And okay. have someone okay. that already knows how to wield a knife correctly to their standard and all that. And someone that won't say no to working on the weekends. To me, doing it myself... Like, I did reach out to people to gain insight on embarking on this now two-year journey. Um, uh-huh. that is still going to continue. Just finding out, you know, readapting, realigning. Um, and yeah, no, I did speak to people, some very notable people that we won't call out or say names. Oh, of course not. Of course. Um, right. But, you know, I, maybe it's pride saying that I could do it. Mm. Um, and at the time, there weren't people that were doing it the way I thought was best in promoting the product. The purity. What does that product. mean? What does like, that mean? Uh, they were they were flaking on flavors that are normal, kind of muting those those punches that you'd normally get with some Filipino flavors. Like the intensity dialed down to reflect a different palette. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know. I was like, shit, I know what it's like in business. I want to be the boss. Ah, okay, okay. I understand that. Sure. I understand that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. you wanted to, you, it's not enough for you to just contribute it's not. on well, somebody else's mission goal. Yeah. You, you basically yeah. lead it yourself yeah. and bring other people along with you yeah. if they want I understand. Yeah, I, that's yeah. totally understand. Like, it's me, man. Uh, like, I got this. And I think there's no better way of learning than doing it yourself. Okay. 
Now, let me let me ask you another question, which, of course, you may also not like the premise of. Sure. Uh, much much you... of the questions you ask, I don't like the premise yeah, of. I know. And I was talking about the finance related questions. I didn't really mean to, to tread on any uh, you no, know, it's needles. Okay. There, but, sure. uh, okay, so, so what, I, what I'm asking now is basically, uh, before you put both feet into this Bunso uh, adventure, did you at, at any point kind of realize that okay i'm doing this i'm mm-hmm. gonna really commit to this but i know that ultimately there's a chance it may not work out yep every day i think that every day yeah because who knows man like i'm blessed enough to know that i have a full-time job that can lead into a career that is very fruitful mm-hmm. right um and many of the people around me are kind of you know chiming in on that because i have the degrees i have the work ethic i have the uh smartness for lack of a better word Mm -hmm. to navigate the field that i'm in Mm -hmm. but and the side business i mean it's a business it's a small business just in the past month dude like so many small businesses have gone under Mm -hmm. I'm lucky that I have a job and my wife has a job. My family has a job to, you know, basically fuel this hobby of mine right now, Mm -hmm. for for lack of a better word, because we're not bringing in massive dough. Um, But yeah, no, I I even think of it. Like, even today I was thinking about it where it's like, well, shit, should I even be continuing this? Right? Mm -hmm. Because given how or my work situation right now and given the new expenses my family wishes to incur uh Mm -hmm. before the year end with the mortgage and you know future kid on top of that which like you said man dude Yu-Gi-Oh packs fucking 10 bucks a month i don't know if i could do that anymore you know that's that's a lot of bull that's a lot of bowls of food that i'm gonna have to be slinging you know that, that may um, not be until a decade away. But you got some time for this movie. Sure. But I'm just, I'm just going to draw them up, man. I'm just going to fucking print them out and paste them on, like, cardboard. And some shit Yo, like I that. Did, I did that before. <laughs> and, uh, brief, brief, brief anecdote here, but do you remember there's this thing called GATE Summer School? G-A-T-E Summer School? No. Like, yeah. Okay, so back in the day, there was this program called uh, GATE, which was Gifted okay. and Talented Education. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, basically... Uh, you know, every summer they would bring, they would invite everyone to like some, uh, uh, you know, high school campus to do sure. some school where you, you take a bunch of different quote unquote classes that are all project based and you get to work with other people from other schools who kind of are of the same uh, intellectual level or, or Damn, at least okay, the okay. intellectual level as you. And, you know, I, I wasn't incredibly smart or anything, but I guess I did good enough in, in, in middle school to be invited into these things. Sure. And uh, for one of the classes, it was kind of... <laughs> sorry, I just, I just thought of imagination. <laughs> yeah, <sorry>. yeah. <laughs> but go ahead, sorry. I... <laughs> yeah, you know, so I actually did have to use my imagination on one of the classes because the theme was like game design, like game development. And what, what I did for my quote-unquote final project for this was basically <laughs> do a knockoff version of Yu-Gi-Oh! Hell like, yeah. I, I, I was so into it at the time, even though a lot of the kids there were playing Magic the Gathering, which is, <laughs> like, I, I was never really into, but oh, probably man. because there was no TV show with it. Sure. But uh, yeah, I was into Yu-Gi-Oh! And I was like, you know what? I'm going to kind of copy the style of Yu-Gi-Oh! And draw my own cards and cut them out. And then it was cool because I made this game, which was kind of a ripoff, right? But I, I had <laughs> at least like half a dozen kids play it that day. Sure. And it, it was cool to like kind of watch that. Like, they learned the rules based on what I, you know, modified after you do, and sure. then they played. And it was kind of cool to see, like, oh, you know, other people use this, um, you know, creation that you uh-huh. meant, which is yeah. really a rip. Yeah, but, man. But that, that's my anecdote about drawing the uh, the cards on paper. Hell yeah. Hey, and you get, like, a certain level of pride that comes with, you know, engineering something. And then seeing other people use it, for better or for worse, right? Because they'll call you out when there's something wrong. But when it works, it's a different level of happiness, ain't it? Yeah, and, and um, you know, I'm, I'm glad you use the word engineer because it does apply to things in the, in the industry as well. Mm-hmm. I, I will say, kind of taking a step back, 
I think for people like you and me, maybe like people who kind of enjoy to flex our creative muscle a little yeah. bit from time to time, I think there's a certain pride there as well, a certain satisfaction knowing that you've done something yeah. using your own brain, like Hell your yeah. own creativity, Hell using yeah. all the experiences and thoughts that you had. You created something, and other people can listen to it, can enjoy Hell it, yeah. and appreciate it, and and it's going to be out there. It's part of your legacy. It's yep. part of what you contributed to the zeitgeist yeah, yeah. And, and i like that I, I really like that feeling so i agree with you there for sure hell yeah uh, so, so go ahead I, I wanted to just tell you that anecdote about drawing cards on cardboard but go ahead F- finish your uh, finish your original train of thought uh, train of thought is long gone dude i, I heard it I, <laughs> right when i brought up imagination that wasn't that was long gone dude like <laughs> You know, I, well, you were you were basically making a joke about, oh, you know, those booster packs are pretty expensive, you know, because you have plans of, you know. <laughs> oh, uh, and then okay, okay, yeah. So yeah, they are. Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah. when it comes to the whole, have I thought about whether or not this would last forever, or, or if I'd have to eventually drop it one day and whatnot? Yeah, no, I think of it probably weekly, to be honest. Okay. A lot more, okay. lot more frequently nowadays, given the situation it is in. Um, sure. Okay. Yeah. So <sighs> now, I guess I want to know. Um, okay, your your first goal that you mentioned was mm-hmm. having a restaurant that would eventually get at least one Michelin star. Hell yeah. I I interpret that as. Shooting for the stars so you can land among the moon or Literally. land on the moon, what, whatever Kanye was trying to say in that quote. Yeah, sure, yeah, you found like that, that. Right? but but well, what land I'm on a cloud, is, but yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Because I think <laughs> I was I was saying land on a moon because it was tied to that video you were showing me. <laughs> sure, the sure, doc, sure. The, the things moving around the moon, but sure. What, what I'm saying is like, why does it have to be that though? Why why does it have to be other people acknowledging? you with the michelin star how come it can't be you just serving people food regardless of profit sure sure no i get i get that it it doesn't have to be to me or rather it what is the standard by which the highest echelon of food criticism measures so it's kind of like um aiming for the nba you just don't want to play professional basketball you want to get into the nba and you want to get that nba title which somehow represents the world title right similar with baseball where Mm -hmm. the world series is the world series even though it's just played by the u.s teams so Mm -hmm. i see michelin similar to that where it is that that group of people that signify the best of the best so okay let me mm-hmm. let me use your own analogy sure to play for those out Ooh, when it. you're younger when you were younger and you let's say you liked basketball you liked playing basketball sure back in the days when you actually shot around more often <laughs> a bit did you ever think that you could make the nba nope why is that what why is that I'm Filipino, and I think we we cap off at like six two. Cap off at six two. Well, there's plenty of <laughs> NBA who are six two and under. So, sure, sure. But but basically, you kind of took a more realistic view of your prospects moving sure. forward as an athlete. Yep. And, and you understood that in the world, at any given instant, there's only 450 people who are in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Lamelo Ball soon to be one of those. Yeah. Soon to be, but we won't transition into that. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes. Soon to be. So, I I guess what I'm saying is, you already acknowledged the limited number Mm -hmm. of restaurants that are even lucky enough to get one Michelin star. Oh yeah, right. So, I I understand. There's there's two things happening here at play, and this is uh, a testament to your character as well. Um, You are a very ambitious and aspirational individual. Sure. And you do not want to do what everybody else is doing. You don't want to go on the same beaten path that everybody else is treading on. Like mm-hmm. you said in that one story that we oftentimes hark back to with the whole imagination, you want to do something that is completely in a new lane. It is a road not traveled. It's not just a road less often traveled. It's a road untraveled. And sometimes 
that comes with a lot of challenges, a lot of uphill climbing. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of risks. There's a lot of pitfalls. And it's an acknowledgement that most likely you'll fail. I mean, Mm -hmm. straight up, most likely you'll fail. But I, I think it can be counterproductive to make that a goal. I think it's counterproductive to make, for, for instance, for me, right? When I was first starting getting into music production, sure. if my goal was to, you know, you know, go go platinum on an album or work with Dr. Dre and, and produce music for 50 Cent or whatever, sure. if those were my kind of goals, I would never reach them. I would never reach them. So I made my goals very simple. My goal was to what? Collaborate with friends, make music, release it to people that I... I talk to all the time, mm-hmm. get their feedback, and try to grow as a amateur producer, <coughs> as an amateur artist. Mm-hmm. And I kind of kept it at that because for me, at least in my mind, I, I knew in my heart of hearts that I wouldn't be the Kanye West of the world. Got I it. wouldn't be the, the Kendrick Lamar Mar- of the world. Hey, that by wasn't the way, my way. Huh? I just want to make yeah. this call out. When I, I love it when people say, within my heart of hearts. To me, that's one of the most eloquent things people can say. I don't know why. But to me, I think it has to deal with Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, believing in the heart of the cards or something like uh-huh. that. But like whenever people say like heart of hearts and within my heart of hearts, that means I know like, oh, something deep's going to come through right now. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> like you have to distinguish like, yo, let me spit some truth. No, nah, within my heart of hearts. I know. <laughs> but go on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> heart of hearts there. I, I just knew that I, I wasn't really meant to be a rapper <laughs> I, knew that I, mean, okay. I, I wasn't meant to be a big time producer because that's not really the life that I was set up with and and already years in to like engineering and all that and, and being somewhat successful not really a, a huge success at all but somewhat successful I knew that it would be too much of a shift and it's not something that would be smart for someone like me to do so for all those negative reasons Humble. Humble. Which are, of course, reasons that somebody like Kanye would hate to hear, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. and that, that's why this I, I always struggle to kind of talk about this with you because I think for you it's very much a dichotomy between what's practical and what is a, a dreamer's perspective sure. because you are a dreamer in many ways. Yep. You you like to reach for things that other people don't even think about. Yep. And and in the process that gives you some sense of pride because you know that your vision is greater or more expansive or, or more long reaching, far reaching than other people's vision. And you know, you, you mentioned flakiness in the sense of switching what that end goal might be, but I still see a very difficult vision to attain, whether that's mm-hmm. the first goal that you had in mind for the business or the second goal for doing so. Um, I, I guess what I'm getting at here is sometimes it's okay to not dream that big not because sure. i think not because i i don't think you can go all the way not because of that at all but it's more like i think it's easier for us to achieve smaller goals of course and and, and repeatedly achieve them and then dream bigger sure i think kobe Bryant actually said it best because before lebron was on the lakers you know things were tough right i mean they were trying to have their identity with the baby lakers trying to see what they had in ingram trying to see if they had a bust in lonzo or not Oh, um, what a bum. <laughs> I'll let that one slide. And so <laughs> so when, when LeBron came on board, Kobe was like, you know, I feel so happy for the Lakers fan base now because with LeBron on the team, they can dream a little bigger. They can dream bigger. They can set their goals higher. Mm. And it's kind of like that. Right? I, I want you, Don, to achieve success in some form first. Sure. Like, like some level of consistent success before you dream even bigger sure, sure. You know, go for that michelin star yeah. or go for that you know that 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 uh panda express style yeah you know, yeah no i get it i get it no no and I, I i'm in total agreement with you uh i think having smaller bites that ultimately lead to the grand plate of getting the michelin star is the right take on things uh, I, I tend to stress the bigger picture, the bigger end game than many would because I like to be reminded of what the ultimate goal is and why every little damn bullshit little step I have to take matters. Mm-hmm. So I completely agree. There are small little steps 
and goals that need to be achieved in order to even begin thinking about those bigger, lofty, shoot for the stars, what is it, land on the moon? <laughs> sort of goals. <laughs> Just anything in the atmosphere. Yeah. Or, Just something soft. There. Something soft. Yeah. Yeah, something yeah soft. so I, I get it, you know, no, and I, I think that's the same way. And, um, I do get blinded. I'll admit, saying like, uh, why settle for something smaller when I could have something bigger if I work another day on it or some shit like that, which never happens or comes mm. to fruition, right? So I'll admit that. Um, but I am doing those things to defend Boonzo. You know, we okay. do have our residency in the Long Beach Farmers Market, and uh, we do have some spots set up where we'll be doing private events. Uh, which is dope, dude. Hey, we have this one idea. It's going to be dope. Um, Boonso. Uh, so my name is going to be Lil Boonso, right? That's my little rap name for my uh, company. Oh, okay. okay. And I'm going to be calling out like other chefs once uh, my buddy's shop opens up. And I'm oh. going to be basically challenging them to like have almost like an Iron Chef throwdown. Oh. Yeah. Wow. We're going to be like, yo. Like in a, imagine like in an Instagram live story. It's like, yo, this is Lil Boonso coming at you live. I'm out here calling out Chef XYZ. Come through uh-huh. May 8th, and we'll see who's really better, right? And then, like, two, three months later, you know, after, like, eight weeks of this or eight challenges, I'll be back and be like, yo, it's Lil Boonso. I'm 0-8, going for the first win. Chef XYZ, I'm coming for you this time. You know, like, some shit like that. You know, entertaining, yeah, growing, you know, marketing. Um, and again kind of challenging myself to say you know what if i really want to break the mold i'm going to mm-hmm. take down everyone in front of me that is in the way that says they're better than me mm-hmm. you know some shit like that and i'm purposely going to lose all of them um just to realize or to help play the mantra of i'm Boonzo, i'm the youngest in the family you never win anything but there's a ton of hand-me-downs that you could use that make you stronger okay. Wow. Okay, that's a that's an interesting uh, way to do it. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I, I I do appreciate you <laughs> thinking out of the box for these marketing ideas. Hell yeah. I think uh, some of them, and, and I stress <laughs> some of them will be successful. I think. <laughs> I, I tried to be as subtle with that as possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he, here's the thing, though. I, I do appreciate the fact that you highlighted your residency in yeah. the long farmer's market as yeah. well as uh, the yeah. events you've already done and events that you'll continue yeah. to do. Yeah, um, yeah. I think stuff like that is exactly what you need to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are doing it. Mm-hmm. And, and I think really the question that you're asking now is how do you get to the next level? Yeah. I think a lot of times, I think a lot of times, you know, in, in the pursuit of the next level, we overlook the importance of consistency. Sure. What I mean by that is, uh, Keep on doing this. Like, definitely maintain uh, this residency at the Long Beach Farmers Market. Do more events if possible, and it just takes time until you meet, let's say, some executive from the the food industry that happens to stumble across Moonso and gives you their card or reaches out to you on Instagram or, or whatever. Um, I, I think you know better than I know, and you've done this beautifully. You've mastered this throughout your, you know your collegiate and your, your professional career, the importance of networking, right? Mm-hmm. Like you probably know tons of people who are already in the industry who are talking to you, who are giving you meetings, giving you tips. And a lot of times it is about meeting the right people at the right time mm-hmm. and, and working with them through these cross promotions like you, you've been doing. You did one, you said, with uh, some some uh, another Filipino entrepreneur that was working in the coffee side of things, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Right? So... You know, I, I, I like that you're doing those kind of double promotions and uh, working with people all over the industry. I think it's a matter of continuing to do that, I would say, number one. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as your social media presence goes, uh, like what what's your follower count now on Instagram? Dude, so that's that? that's something that it's low. It's like 1,200, I think. Let okay. me double check. But thing is, okay. what I'm realizing is I need to develop – uh, not what's well, I forget the right term, but sort of like active followers, not fake followers that just kind of see you once and then they're over it, sort of thing. Uh, okay. Loyal followers. There we go. 
So I need I need to start building up a gang, dude, like a green or purple gang. I need to start doing that. <laughs> so that's oh. something I'm slipping on and lacking, and that's something I'm planning on working on starting tomorrow. You know, okay. developing something new every day because I got time. Develop a story like a, that. You know, I can garner a larger audience with, and okay. that, and as well as the website itself. That's something I need to start doing. I need to start writing articles and tapping into the. You know, instead of just absorbing the news and information I have around me, start contributing. Mm. Okay. So, like, um, tell me, tell me this thing though. Like, so, say when you go to the farmers market, your mm-hmm. last experience at the farmers market. Mm-hmm. I know you've been talking about like thirty plus or minus five bulls. Yeah, That's yeah, great. Yeah. In terms of your interactions with the customers, yeah. what kind of what kind of uh, questions do they typically ask you about your business about Brunso? Like, what what kind of feedback do you get? Yeah, yeah. So it's not necessarily about the business itself. They ask more about the food. Right. Okay. So like, hey, what what is this made of? Oh, how is this different from this other place that we normally get our stuff from? Oh, what do you use to like? What ingredients do you use? Stuff like that. Yeah. And of course, I answer with honesty, um, yeah. hiding my secrets that I got that make my food my food. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then they talk about you know where else are you involved? What else are you doing? Uh, is it just you two? That's usually a normal question, right, between me and my wife. Okay. Um, are you guys here all the time? Can we find you anywhere? That sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you ever get comments like, hey, like, uh, you know, do you guys uh, do food trucks? Do you guys yeah. Uh, yeah. cater? Are you, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. You get that comment too. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, um, like, do, so how long have you been doing the farmer's market? Just a couple of months, like before COVID Just season? Co- yeah, basically like a month before COVID, we were going strong. <laughs> then like okay. COVID hit, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, so, oh, okay, so yeah. this is some good news that I'll probably tell you. I think after COVID season dies down yeah. and you're back full-time every weekend at this yeah. residence at Long Beach, yeah. I think that can only get better because oh, yeah. it's, re- it's really – like that's such an amazing thing, Don. Oh, yeah. Because You'll have new people trying your food, or at least looking at your stand yep. or booth, like every single week. Hell yeah, hell yeah! And with my bright pink shirts, hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> you you rock those. No, 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 we're we're going to eventually. It's it's black oh, with like okay. pink uh, ink, but I want to switch ah. it up, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna go all out. And with summer coming up, I'm just gonna have bright pink tees or tanks. I'm like okay. fuck it, I don't care if they see my side fat. Don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. get, get it in like in like a medium. So <laughs> <laughs> how the fuck are his nipples hard in this heat? Like, how the fuck? Like, <laughs> is, is he super fucked or just like packed pork sausage? Is it that, like, <laughs> oh yeah, see, it'll it'll draw him in. They'll have to like come closer to look, and then boom, I hit him with the smell. Hell yeah! Exactly. There you go. <laughs> but no, so I think you know that that's something honestly to hang your hat on because you know that as long as you have that spot, it is a place for you. To sure, sell you things, sure. To and it, it goes beyond that. Not to just, you know, note the pros to my um, business. There's great people there. Uh, I've, I've talked uh, and almost worked with many, many farmers markets. So the Long Beach one has been fantastic throughout the whole process. And um, shout out to Long Beach Farmers Market. It's great. Now, now not to... Uh say that long beach is the best farmer's market oh it's definitely the best yeah okay well <laughs> all right but i guess what i'm saying is, <laughs> would, you, would you be open would you be open to maybe trying a, yep. a farmer's market in the la area maybe yep. or uh, yep okay i mean there it's twofold mm-hmm. i wanted one on sunday because okay. i still have my monday through friday job mm-hmm. the saturday was just my way of controlling the fact that I still got a family and I, I still want to be present. Sure. Right. So I have considered it given the rigor that comes with running farmers markets. They kind of expect you to be there every week. The last thing I wanted to do is be like, Hey, can I come every other week or something like that? Mm. So in order to respect their work, 
I wasn't going to put my lazy ass uh, schedule up for grabs. Because the last thing I want to do is, you know, be that one dude that shows up when he wants to. Right. So. I understand. I understand. So, so basically, what you're telling me is uh, having at least one day in the weekend mm-hmm. for personal time, for family time, yep. is, is paramount. Right? Yep. It's something you don't want to sacrifice your mind. Yep. Okay. For well, now. That's- for now. If we grow and I eventually, you know, have employees that I can mm-hmm. trust and run the whole thing, then yeah. But mm-hmm. again, to me, it's it's building the brand myself without compromising the product. Mm. I understand. Um, and and okay, so we talked about the farmers market, sure. and in terms of like, let's say, number of events per month, are we averaging about one, give or take, maybe one or two per month? No, dude, every weekend. Oh, events, events, events beyond the farmers market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. No. Well, what was it? We had one earlier this year. I say it's okay. very sporadic. Mm. So I would say at best right now we're shooting for one every other month. Ah, gotcha. gotcha. And cool. that was done on purpose, knowing that again that partnership that you had mentioned earlier, we'd eventually be doing private events there once you know mm. shop opened up. Mm-hmm. But because of the whole COVID thing, that's on hold right now. Okay. Right, because even permitting and. Um, the whole legal kind of uh, checks and balances that go on with opening up a new um, service spot, it's kind mm-hmm. of on hold. Okay. Um, so, so given the climate, mm-hmm. I, I would actually go back to the first thing we talked about in terms of... Uh, anime? Like, well, <laughs> not anime, but, but the private catering toward, like, let's sure. say, the nursing. Yeah, and that's... Uh, I wrote it down. That's something that I'm going to do, man. Like, it's something I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, I'm just going to hit up... I'm going to start off not so much with nurses. Well, nurses are going to be a part of it, but I'm going to hit up my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, you being one, you get first dibs. Where, but yo, are you interested? I uh, prefer, you know, 10 bowls for your lunch or whatever for you and your buddies. Uh, mm-hmm. Not expecting any money for the food. If you want a tip or pay for my gas, by all means. Let me know. But... Mm-hmm. Some work's mm-hmm. going to be required on my end where I'm going to have to set up a menu and all that. Because what makes it difficult right now is there's a damn, uh, what is it? Not deficit. What do you call it when, uh, like for meat right now, it's it's hard to get. because oh, production like a is shortage? Down. Shortage? Yeah, there's a shortage right now of meat. And the last uh-huh. thing I want to be doing is um, adding fuel to that shortage. But mm-hmm. there's a way around it because I know it's going to the right people for the right reasons. It's not just mm-hmm. being, you know, me hogging it and storing it in a freezer outside. So okay, um, I, I do get the reaching out to uh, different offices and whatnot because yep. of your friends. Um, I think that's a good idea to start um, off. You know, I, but you know, like for instance, for my situation, I know starting Monday. Uh, they're actually phasing in people uh, like I guess half at a time or a third at a time Sick. back into the office. So, uh, you know, I'll be there you know, week one. Um, I know some other people will be there too, but it'll take a few weeks probably before oh, for my sure. office for sure. is like back all the way. Of and course. What, I only say that, I only say that because I imagine other companies are probably doing something similar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, or like mine people. where they're fucking doing furloughs, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I just think that um, maybe you're going to do like a shotgun approach, I'm sure, where you reach out to multiple people. Of course, people, but, of course. But I, I do like the idea about reaching out to, you know, people in the emergency services, whether that is a hospital of ward course. or... You know, a firefighter house. What do, what do you call it? A firehouse? Why am I having such a hard time thinking yeah, of the yeah. name? Yeah, it's a firehouse, firehouse. You know, where Dalmatian lives or something like that. Fire uh, department. Fire department, right? <laughs> Is that the right word? I don't know. Dalmatian? Yeah, that's right. I never see one of the firehouses. Oh, dude, it's because them. they're wise, man. They don't want to be working. They're hiding where the AC is. <laughs> You're probably right about that. <laughs> right. So, you know, even like the, the police department, if you can. Or, yeah. or you know, I, I guess... Um, I guess it's difficult with teachers now, right? Because yeah. uh, they're not really working. Yeah. <laughs> Schools out for the whole academic year. Yeah. But you know, I, I think uh, 
once you like uh, find an opportunity like that, mm-hmm. then then do let me know because I, it's not just words that I say regarding you know investing. Oh, I know, your... I know you're good for it. I know you're good for it. I know. Yeah, yeah. No, I want to. Like, I, I very much want to because I think it will help, and I think it will be a good way to kind of you know get you going, give you some Ooh. momentum Ooh. while COVID season is ramping down, Ooh. so you can carry that momentum right back into Ooh. Long Beach and right back into uh, all the different events that you're going to be doing sporadically throughout the year hopefully more consistently as well i think that momentum is key and if i can if i could be a a uh a stimulus of some co- some sort okay if i could provide a stimulus check let's say mm-hmm. <laughs> to get that momentum going hey, man. i'll be more than happy to hey, do so. we'll take a small business loan from you an sbsa loan oh, for... it's not even a loan not even a loan it, it is a grant <laughs> let's call it a <laughs> taxable is it taxable <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I can get some tax benefits. <laughs> but um, in any case, uh, no. I mean, look, look. I understand. One of your primary questions was, you know, you feel like you may be flaking is not really the right word. But you may yeah. Waff- between waffling between mm-hmm. like what you want to ultimately accomplish yeah. with Bloom. Yeah, and I mean, right now, I could at least say what I'm settling on is. I want to open a brewery that offers fucking bomb ass food. That's what. Oh wow! Is. Third thing now. This is a third no. Well, because I've always had a passion for beer, and that was something that I had wanted to do. I mean, okay. my, my ultimate goal was to have a suite, you know, like a like a plaza almost, not a giant one, but a small one, where all my companies would be. <laughs> you basically you want to be Kanye. You want to open up a no, little. No, no, no. But but it would be all related. Like, uh-huh. you could go anytime throughout the day, and there would be something there for you. Mm. So you know, in the mornings, you'd have a donut slash coffee shop there that served uh-huh. food, right, and a place to hang out, right. Then at lunchtime, you'd have the Bunso Express, the quick pickup if you're working in the area. Or if you want to sit down, my Michelin star place would be right there. That would offer a light lunch menu. Mm. Right. But, you know, once that coffee donut shop kind of, you know, starts closing up because morning's ending, you have the afternoon into evening. That's when the brewery would be going on where people can come hang out, hit happy hour there, get some, Mm. you know, bites before you go at your reservation at the Michelin star place. Mm. Something like that. And then underground you have a little karaoke bar or some shit or you know <laughs> you, you know after you know you've had a few you know at the brewery, you get to go kick it you know maybe bowl a little bit here or there something like that sure you know something okay. like that and then maybe okay. i'll have like tax services or some shit there I don't know. <laughs> now you're really <laughs> or I'll, I'll or i'll have a greenery there right uh, a little green cross <laughs> is that what you came up with green cross i love that okay well here's here's what i'd say Although I love the vision, I love your imagination. I love that. <laughs> I, I just think, um, you know, when it comes to these kind of goals, uh-huh. I would say focus on yeah, baby steps. One or two lanes <laughs> pops. One or two lanes pops. It, it, it is nice to think about all this. And to be honest with you, it's also one of those things where, like, if you had a ton it, like here's what i would say if i had a ton of money sure then what i would what i would probably do if i had dreams kind of like yours i would look for retail space like that yep and and maybe if i didn't have all the ideas myself i would look to hire yep. you know fledging companies <coughs> like yours yep. to fill up that space of course and kind of like encompass that vision that i'm thinking of like yeah. oh like i'd want to have a company that does coffee and bagels i want yeah. to have a company that does oh lunch and then maybe like a really nice fancy restaurant for dinner like just have that all together mm-hmm. in one kind of uh like a sprawling march somewhere yep yep um, but but see that that's more of a really really long-term type of thing like once you do have that much you know income to work with for your business then you can think in, in terms of like oh yeah i want to have like a whole lot all to myself. All hell yeah. Of- hell yeah. And then after that, you get Boonso Land r- opening right up next to Disneyland. Boom. <laughs> Boonso Studios. What's up? I love the vision, though. We're bringing up see. anime now, dude. Ooh. Marvel Marvel got nothing on me once I release that anime stock I got going on, dude. No dude you're going to make anime. Boonso Vision. You're going to make your own shit, man. <laughs> every, every anime is starring like a little pig. Hell yeah, <laughs> dude. Hell yeah. Box. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> Evolving into like a, a super pig. And yeah, man. It's going to be like an anime like with the basketball team. The main team is going to be like a pig. Like that's no, like slam dunk. <laughs> slam dunk with pigs, right? Yeah, I mean, it's an anime. I it's an anime. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say like uh, always remember what got you into this business in the first place. Sure. And it's the fact that you enjoyed cooking and you enjoyed other people's reactions to your food. Yep. You enjoyed taking care of your crew, as you said, taking care of your friends, your family, and, and seeing the people's reactions to eating something that you, you know, put your heart and soul into. And I think as long as you have that uh, central to your vision, I don't think it really matters what you end up with. If it is a Michelin star restaurant, fantastic. Mm -hmm. If it is something that you do as a hobby for many years to come and that gives you some income and it gives you pleasure and it gives you some notoriety, even just locally, fantastic. Because it is something that you're doing to fulfill your dreams. And your dream doesn't have to be defined by somebody else's uh, Zagat book or, or Michelin star guidebook, whatever it may be. It's pretty much how you define it, and you're going to define it by people enjoying your really wholesome, you know, uh, Bunso Filipino cooking. And I oh, think yeah. as long as you're there, I think you'll be happy. You know, you'll be happy that way. So keep that in your heart. Like I know, in my heart of hearts, in your heart of hearts. You know, just uh, <laughs> I know it's always in your in your habit, in your character to think big picture and mm-hmm. think what am I ultimately trying to do, but know that you are doing a lot of the right things already. Yep. You are linking up with a lot of people in the industry. You're having these meetings. You're, you are reaching out. Your followers are growing, maybe at an anemic pace, but they're still growing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some, some things take time. Yeah, and man. like you said, dude, you've only been doing farmer's market for like exact, a month. Exactly. No, and I know. So, I know. It's just part of me to push, 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 push. If I'm not moving, I feel like something's wrong. Mm. Um, and time is such a precious, precious commodity that mm-hmm. shouldn't even be a commodity or treated as a commodity, at least in my book. So I try to maximize it as much as possible wherever I can. And the same mm-hmm. goes across all aspects of my life, whether it come with family, whether it come mm-hmm. with, um, you know, having and fostering friendships or mm-hmm. working on the business. Because to me, the business is much more than just making money or rather it should be Mm. um Mm. it's a means of living not just for one family the owners and employees and whatnot but providing a space by which those seconds that time can be spent in the best way possible Mm. i don't know we'll see i mean this is this brought up a lot of light i was bummed out dude like freaking yesterday and today <laughs> just thinking about things like uh i know that my wife realizes i'm bummed out when she's like yo you want to get ice cream and i'm like oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like it's great are, um, are you are you usually the type that gets a little more quiet more quieter than usual when you're a little bummed out no like, it's just she could i think she could see it ah uh, she could gotcha. see it it's uh one of those um you know we lived together for so long now and uh uh-huh. It's uh yeah maybe I get quiet but I think it's it just shows probably in, like uh, in my brow or some shit like I, I do a, a fucked up people's eyebrow or some shit going on. <laughs> <People's> eyebrow. <laughs> it's like both eyebrows are up. Yeah. Now. It's like, wait a second. What's, yeah. What's going on? yeah, and it's like uh, all the way on like the the inside part too. It's not even like on the outside. It's like some weird looking shit. <laughs> it's like a sad kitty. It's like a sad kitty. <laughs> What the, hell? what the hell is he doing right now? No, I, think, I, I should hear you. But, um, you know, no, like, like I said, man, you have plenty of things actually going for you. I know oh, yeah, it's man. not going at the pace that you would desire. Sure. But these things take time. And you, I would be, you would be hard pressed to find the examples of businesses similar to your level that are thriving in this of particular course. time. Of course. And if, if, I mean, just in general. I think if a business is finding success without facing any um, adversity, adversity, yeah, um, there's something wrong. Whether mm. it be there's someone cheating or there's some big fuck up about to happen or someone getting ready to stab you in the back, 
Ooh. So in order to have, or in order to have these obstacles in the way that you can't hurdle over, you gotta climb. I think mm. is part of the process. Mm. So what better way to learn it than actually be at the helm? I think so. And and you know there'll probably come a time when Bunso becomes more and more uh, successful and will require more of your time and maybe more of your energy. Hoping, dude. I'm hoping to retire at 40 and then uh, <laughs> take this. Yeah. Take this full time. That'd be know? nice, but I guess what I'm getting at is, uh, you know, if you ever feel like you do need to put in more time into Boonso because mm-hmm. there's a lot of things lined up or whatnot, it, mm-hmm. it's okay if you if you need to, like, kind of tone down the music production, let's say, or tone no. down no, 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 podcasting no, no, no. And, and all that. You, you can... No. Follow your dreams, basically. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Hey, like, dude. Don't, hey, don't like... dude. See, like you, you said you never wanted to be like Kanye or be the next Kanye, dude. I'm aiming to be beyond Kanye. Like I'm gonna buy Wyoming, you know. Like he's gonna live in my state, something like that. A Wyoming purchase right, instead dude. of a Louisiana purchase. Yeah, yeah dude. That's, it's gonna have. It's probably cheaper anyways nowadays. So you know, I'll probably do it that way. Wow. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I say it jokingly, but. You know, in my heart of hearts. That's something I'm going to try to fucking do, dude. Like, fuck it. I want the top. Like, give me the crown. Mm. Yeah. And I'll I, do everything you know, I can to snatch it from you. Don't well, <laughs> don't fucking be caught flipping around me. Huh? You know? One thing that I, I often wonder about this mentality, and I uh-huh. do admire it in many ways. One thing I wonder is this. Like, say if you were really, really going for it, as if it was like a... a 50 cent get rich or die trying type of situation where you have to make Bunso work. Yeah. Then in that situation, what, what more would you be doing? Do you ever think in that terms? Like, would I give up my current nine to five and, and just really, really, Mm -hmm. you know, work through my network, work through my social network and find opportunities, take every meeting possible, take every job possible. Like what, what would you be doing in that situation where you had to make Bunso work to survive? Exactly what you said. Never say no. Every door, or rather, every person, every thing you learn, every opportunity you have will only yeah. open up many, many more down the line. And you will fail at 90%, maybe 99% of the things that mm. come your way. But it's just that 1% that you need. That one yes is all you need to begin the inertia and snowball effect that will come. Hopefully you have the capital to do it, but you don't need the capital to do it, given today's um, technology. Everything mm. could be done via email, via Instagram, via anything. Zoom nowadays, yeah. I'm sure you could just pop into any Zoom meeting and just be like, hey, uh, Bunso, check it out. <laughs> Sorry, peace. You know, like there's there's so many outlets, and if that were the case, then yeah, because ultimately, it's fueling my passion, and it, it would at that point be a means of providing for my family, which at that point would be even more uh, of a motivation to push the business forward, right? Mm. Because then it becomes beyond even me and my mm. own wants. It becomes a need. So now, a rather serious question, which I think I know the answer to, but I'll ask anyways. Uh-huh. Have, have you actually considered turning this into a full-time thing where you do give up the job and you just go hard to make Bunso work? Yes and no. I have considered it. Um, mm. And let me... I did the... You know, took the... Uh, logical approach to it and did the pros and cons pros Mm. forces a business to grow at a faster rate than it would be if done otherwise Mm -hmm. pro doing nothing but what i want being my own boss and having complete responsibility of where it goes i see that as a pro not a con okay uh pro control the schedule of everything I do. Um, I could be anywhere I need to be when it comes to responsibilities. And I could be everywhere I need to be because I control the schedule. Mm. Unless there's like an important meeting and, you know, yada, yada. Mm. Cons. 
My ass has a lot of loans, and I'm on public student loan forgiveness. I need a full time job at a nonprofit. <laughs> <laughs> Cons. Uh, income is not steady. It's not guaranteed. As guaranteed. Uh, mm-hmm. I say as guaranteed now because my ass again may I remind you is fucking for a load. Um, con. Uh, what is it? Oh, con is you know. Uh, I don't control my schedule. I have responsibilities that I cannot say no to, and that must be done for the betterment of a team that I support, but I'm not, you know, the boss of. Con, I'm not building towards my dream. Wait, wait, so, I'm sorry, when you're saying these cons, are these cons for the same event? It almost Well, seems con- like... cons are like, you know, um, not taking it on full-time. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, okay, I, I usually think of cons as in, like, when you're talking about pros and cons, I thought you were talking about just if you pursue Boon so far. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, oh, this you're, is you're like, saying... because, yeah, okay. yeah. So okay. it's like, stuff like that. So I, I think okay. you kind of get it. I, I think you knew this already. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's there's so many pros and cons, and it's just, I don't think, mm-hmm. given the, the lack of a need to have to do it, I don't think it would be wise of me to straight up drop everything I have and do it. Uh, considering the fact so that, that I have to, I'm, you know, I'm the primary I'm, breadwinner and all that, too. I understand. So this is really important because this is how you contextualize and frame your success. And let me explain what do I mean by that. Ooh. So I think if you were to have less time, let's say this was earlier in your life mm-hmm. and you were less responsible for others, let's just put it that way. In in that situation, um, I think it's justifiable. It's even more justifiable for you to really pursue your dreams because yep. if you fail, it's you failing. Mm-hmm. It's not you and your dependents, your family thing. It's mm-hmm. just you. Um, so there's less of a uh, burden in that sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I, I would probably advise you differently if this was years ago. Because of I think a lot of times, especially for entrepreneurs, you have to be willing to do everything as, as hard as possible for as long as possible yep. until you get that break. Mm-hmm. And if you do half-ass it, Chances are you'll fail, just like 95% of all other small businesses. Mm-hmm. That would be the advice I would give you before. But now, given your situation, given your worldview, mm-hmm. I do agree with what you're doing because you are beholden to your family now, too. Mm-hmm. And you have to make sure that they're supported and you have to make sure that the moves that you're making are stable enough such that you you won't be going for broke. Like, you'll pretty mm-hmm. much, uh, you'll, you'll treat Bunso as a, a passion you'll mm-hmm. treat Bunso as a side hustle mm-hmm. and you'll make it work as much as you can of course you will devote time to it mm-hmm. other than your hustle time other than your family time but it, you'll never be able to put in as much time as you would if you were on your own years ago with with nothing else but energy and passion and drive you'll never be able to put that much oh, time sure. into it but given that given that situation I think you're already doing quite a lot for Boon So. Mm-hmm. And the fact it's not growing at the rate you want, honestly, that's something that you're going to have to just accept. Well, and yeah, I think it'll have... it'll never reach the pace that I want it to. If it ever does, yeah. then I know I've lost my mind or I've done something really, really good that is unprecedented <laughs> and I need to write a book on it. You know. Well, like... here's the thing, though, also. I think a lot of times, as you know, life works in very unexpected ways. Sure. Um, you... <laughs> You, you may meet someone uh, in, in undergrad that lived in the same dorm as you that you were friends <laughs> yeah. for a little bit and then for years, for probably three, four year period, you don't even talk to that person. Sure. And then all of a sudden, like years later in life, you reconnect and you talk to them on a weekly basis and conversations can be extremely insightful, compelling, mm-hmm. and entertaining masses and legions of fans that are so <laughs> <Legions>. that's that. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, you never know how life works in that way. So I feel like even though, you know, we may model things, right? In our minds, we're always modeling things. We're mm-hmm. projecting things and we're, we're guessing how things will turn out. You never know when a, when a lucky break will come or a spike in popularity will come from one of your 
you know, Top Chef style contests on Instagram live. <laughs> what, 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 some of these really might take off and, and give you a boon. <laughs> Mm-hmm. A boon. A oh, what a wordplay there! Maybe you work yeah, that man. one into your raps. I think. I <laughs> so you know, you, you never know how how things will change, how your fortunes will change in the future. But take pride in all that you have accomplished thus far. Of course. Know that your your family believes in you, your friends believe in you, your customers believe in you too. They love your food. Yep. And and sometimes it's just about consistency. Sometimes being consistent and keeping on keeping on is tough. But it is necessary, and you'll find that it brings you rewards that maybe you didn't think it would. But keep it up, man. Just my, my advice, my main advice to you is just keep going. I, I know uh, better things are to come, and and always be optimistic. You know, keep that optimism up. I know there are days when you will get some disappointing news, or there will be days when you'll get setbacks. We we will always have some rainy days in life, mm-hmm. but just know that tomorrow is a new day, and the sun will rise again. Sure these thing. are these are old things. These are old sayings, but it is true in in some extent. There there will always be opportunities. There will always be new customers. There will always be new situations for Bunso to get in. And I think it'll be a beautiful journey. You'll remember these times. You'll remember these modest times when Bunso was just you know a fledging business that was doing a a residency in Long Beach Farmers Market and taking up events sporadically here and there. Mm-hmm. Years from now, who knows? I may be dining at your Bunso restaurant in, in the city of uh, Alhambra or something. <laughs> 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 I don't know if that's a good city. I just picked <laughs> But, uh, you know, I think you never know where life will take you. But as long as you keep that passion and as long as you keep in mind the whole reason why you got into Bunso in the first place, if, if you're true to that, in your heart of hearts, if you're true to that, then I think you'll be satisfied with however you end up with Bunso. How, whatever path you're on, whatever journey you're taking on Bunso, I think in your heart of hearts you'll be happy because you're sticking true to yourself. You're not sacrificing the principles that got you into this in the first place. So there you go. That, that's my uh, that's my two cents. I, I tried to be as inspirational, as motivational as I could at this uh, particularly late hour. But hopefully, hopefully that did something for you. I hope that uh, this course. conversation gave you some some uplifting uh, words, you know, and, and made you feel like you know you are doing something. You are doing something positive, and you're helping people, and you have good ideas that you're going to jump into tomorrow. So, so you're looking good, man. You're definitely on the right track. I think so. I think so. I just need some more sun, sunlight, heat. I think. Um, and, and with the with the hand gesticulation, <laughs> sunlight on top of the heat, <laughs> you know, sun sunlight down on that heat. Yeah, no, I think it'll it all work out. And um, again, yeah, it's not it's a life that's fun living because I have the opportunity of even planning this sort of shit. Uh, mm-hmm. There are many of those right now that are struggling that are. You know, selling on the street pieces of cotton, hoping to make enough money to feed their family that very same day. Um, so my heart really goes out to those people. And, you know, not to make light of my situation, mm-hmm. this is nothing in comparison to those. So mm. it is yeah. it is always good, Dom, that you keep things in the proper perspective. And understand that, you know, uh, we're all kind of struggling with different things. We all have uh, hardships. Yep. People are yep. always going to be out there that are less fortunate than ourselves, and we should always count our lucky stars, lucky moons, and lucky clouds. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! And Kanye, I'm coming for you, man. Wyoming, you got to pick another state, buddy. I'm coming for it. I'm gonna take Cody. What is that, Cody? Oh, fuck that. Nah, no, fuck that. I'm going to rename that city particularly, like, Shitville or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sign me up for that beef. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely produce for uh, for you, you know, going back, firing shots in Kanye. But then we'll get killed when Push joins Kanye. When Push is like, oh, what? I'll, I'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I'll, I'll be pushing. See, he pushes, um, he pushes other things. Uh, I got my other things to push, you know, like food and stuff. So. There you we, go. That's I build a fan are. base differently, you know? There you go. There you go. Different kind of base we're talking about. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> more right. sauce. More sauce on our side. <laughs> more sauce. I like it. I like it. 
Well, uh, you know, what do you think, Don? Should we should we wrap it up for the podcast today, or yeah. did you want to? No, I think this is a good way to wrap it up. It's a good healthy listen. Uh, I think so. Clocking in at a solid one hundred, oh, one hundred, one hour forty four. Nice. So I think it's good. You got any uh, last words? Any last words? Well, I guess um, my last words would be, uh, I need to try Bunzo this year. Oh, uh, well, what um, happen? We'll make it happen this week or next week. Or this this month. This month we'll make it happen. <laughs> when when this whole uh, social distancing thing dies down a little bit, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely be making a trip. And I think there'll be events uh, coming up. I oh, think, for sure. Summer, no, I'm, not, I'm planning there. on doing a whole drop for you anyways because my ass has nothing to do these for a little week, so I might as well at least. But I, I will say uh, if you are – oh, how's the, how is the beat making going, by the way? Like I know things are busy, but like are you interested in uh, – Continuing that first beat that you were working on. Oh hell yeah, dude! Hey, you saw me play around and get that intro in, right? That intro. Now I just need a little outro or way to chop it up a little bit more. Um, yeah, because I, 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 I want to what... add another drum oh. pattern in there. Oh, you do? Okay. Do. okay. Yeah. So that when uh, we do our uh, verses, mm-hmm. um, you know, have it pop a little bit here and there. Mm. Like I want okay. uh, one of our last eight bars to have nothing but like you know a drum going. Oh wow! Or, okay, or, like, or like break out the drums completely and just have those horns going on, the organs <laughs> going. Oh, to to make the the words like super. Yeah, like, yeah, like got, yeah, in your I, heart of hearts. <laughs> Believe in the cars. <laughs> arrive, and you'll get out of there in time. <laughs> like some bullshit like that. No, I feel you. Um, I, I, all I gotta say is like, wh- whenever you are at a comfortable spot with the beat, yep. do send it over. Do send yes. it over, and then um, and I can start writing to it. If you have a vision in mind, too, for sure. as far as like you know how like for the last one, I kind of thought, hey, let's do it this way. I'm gonna just write up some bars. I'm gonna yeah, throw it over California, to you. Just yeah. yeah, you could do that for me too. Like okay. if you just have a vision that you want both of us to go on, sure. go ahead and write, man. Whatever okay. makes sense to you, okay. uh, we will definitely do for this outro. I All think right. uh, it'll be a nice way to do it. But yeah, I guess that's a nice tease for the fans. They have something to look forward to for future podcasts. Maybe, uh, who knows when we'll debut it? Maybe by end of May. You know, sure. we'll uh, cook something up for the audience. Yeah. Oh, hey, by uh, the way, something you need to do for the next podcast. Um, oh, okay. You need to do your research. I doubt you will on the fighters because I think the fight's next week, next weekend. Oh, really? It's uh, May 9th or something, you said, right? Yeah, I think so. Let me double check. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Yeah, um, I think uh, what you advised me to do was like check maybe a couple days before the fight because they may do some last minute changes, mm-hmm. right? Expected uh, May 9th. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, cool. no updates, so it might work. For sure. So, May 9th will be. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. So, Ooh, so been... we're, you know what we're going to be doing next weekend? Oh, if... oh hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> we'll live reaction. Yeah, sure. Oh, man. Uh, no video next time, though. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. No, no, we do. We got to keep it clean now that we're official. <laughs> but all right, man. Th- this has been another fantastic. Uh, what, what, what do we call this? Four point five. I think four point five. Super Saiyan four point five. Something like that. Super Saiyan four point five. Great title. Uh, you know. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, as I always like to say, we will catch you on the flippity flip. And uh, enjoy, enjoy this weekend. And and uh, shout out to all the mothers out, out there because uh, we might forget next weekend, but Mother's Day is coming up. Yeah. So uh, make sure you, uh, you know, here's a here's a plug for one eight hundred flowers dot com, and they will deliver a nice bouquet of white orchids, red roses, or even tulips to your mother, mothers, whatever whatever woman is in your life yeah. that, that, that will have kids. <laughs> go ahead and give them some flowers. There we and go. Maybe buy them some chocolates. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, DNA signing off. Until next time, guys. Take care. Peace. Ha, ha, ha.